Lovers, my name is Carrie, and this is Spines and Spoilers. As you may or may not notice, I am recording this on the same day as the summer book tag, or as I called it, the end of summer book tag. Being said, I am still drinking coffee and reading, let me grab it, Arcacad Arts by Melissa Albert. Um, also reading the ebook for Tinder is the Flesh. I'm not pulling it back out right now. <laughs> um, the Arc for the Hike by Lucy Clark, and listening to Babel um, by R.F. Kuang. I do this because that means that no matter where I go, I have something to read. Whether I have my phone with me, my tablet, or a physical book, I'm always able to read. It has really helped with keeping me on task and keeping me motivated when it comes to reading. That out of the way, today I want to discuss the mid-year freakout tag. Is it the middle of the year anymore? No, not really. Um, it's a couple of months past at least, depending on when I post this. Let's go ahead and get started. If it seems like I'm in a rush, it is because it is the morning technically, but it is getting hot very quickly and I cannot deal with the heat. So number one, best book that you've read so far in 2023. Of course, this one has to be complicated. It's a three-way tie. The first one is A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. Amazing book. I love T. Kingfisher completely. She has my heart. Um, if she wants to get married, just call me up. Only being slightly hyperbolic. Um, the next one is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. It actually had T. Kingfisher vibes, oddly enough, which is probably why I liked it so much. Um, I also love Grady Hendrix's books, but maybe not as much as T. Kingfisher. And the last one is Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones, which was very good. All of these got at least a 4.5, if not a 5. I have a nice little reflection on my face now, so that's nice. Um, number two is, what is the best sequel that you have read so far this year? And that is probably The Hawthorne Legacy by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I enjoyed that whole trilogy. I kind of didn't expect to, but I absolutely loved it. That actually relates to number three, which is, new release that you haven't read yet but want to, which is The Hawthorne Brothers, <laughs> also by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. Um, it is coming out soon, I think in September, October, November, December, one of those months, at the end of 2023 though. Either way, I'm excited. Um, I feel like number four is a very similar question. Uh, it's most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and I put down Let Us Descend by Jasmine Ward. I have not read nearly enough of Jasmine Ward's work, um, and I am planning on spending November reading mostly books by Indigenous peoples, so I'm really looking forward to expanding my Jasmine War Ward collection, if I can talk. Number five, uh, biggest disappointment so far, and for that I put um, I Kissed Shara Wheeler. Uh, I heard so many good things about it, and then I read it, and I could not get into it. I think it's because I'm not really in that de demographic, I'm not sure. Also, if I seem distracted, it is because my parents' neighbor <laughs> is outside, and I feel so awkward. Like, they're not watching me or anything, they're just behind their, their trailer doing stuff, but every once in a while I'll see them, like, pop out, and I'm very self-conscious. Number six is Biggest Surprise, which would either be Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I thought I had already read this book. I didn't know that I had not, um, but it was really good. Actually, I don't know why I put this down for Biggest Surprise because it's Grady Hendrix. I guess it's just a surprise because I didn't know that I hadn't read it. <laughs> and the other one that I put down is A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, I believe. That book was far better than I ever thought it would be. Number seven is favorite new author, and it can be a debut or new to you. I did one for both because, of course, um, the first one is Riley Sager. I technically read a book by Riley Sager at the end of last year, I believe, but after I read one, I kind of got into a Riley Sager kick where all I wanted to read was his books. Um, it started as, wow, this is ridiculous. I need more of this. This... <laughs> These trash novels, they're not trash. That's mean to Riley Sager. They're not trash. But um, some of them are very silly, and I love it. That being said, I do enjoy the serious ones as well. Also, I just realized I didn't acknowledge the fact that there's shaky cam. I'm very sorry about that. I didn't bring any of my filming equipment with me. Next one is Jillian McAllister of Wrong Place, Wrong Time. 
Um, I just randomly picked this one up on Libby. Didn't really know what to expect, but I really enjoyed her book, and I'm looking forward to the next one. Number eight is newest fictional crush. Okay, look, I don't really have fictional crushes. Um, it's not really been a thing other than maybe, like, Lucy Lawless, <laughs> the person who played um, Xena. She's a celebrity crush. Um, the newest th one, though, the only person that I say is, like, a book boyfriend or something like that which I don't even say because I think it's a very silly term, no offense, um, is like Peter Mellark, and that's just, be just because I think he's a pure cinnamon roll and we should protect him at all costs. I am actually demisexual, so I don't... Yeah, I don't experience a lot of that stuff. Number nine, who is your newest favorite character? Um, this one is not entirely new, but I'm going to count it. Um, it's Jade from My Heart is a Chainsaw and um, Don't Fear the Reaper. I really enjoy her character, and I'm kind of hoping that we get more from that universe at the very least, if nothing else. Number 10, a book that made you cry. This is another three-way tie, because I cry about everything. Um, the first one is How to Lose the Time War. That one was kind of rough at times. Um, the next one is I'm Glad My Mom Died, um, which was very rough at times, especially if you have ever had an eating disorder or are currently struggling with one, um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going into it, at least not without looking up trigger warnings first. And then the last one, of course, is What If It's Us, uh, because that had, it was very bi bittersweet, I would say. Number 11, book that made you happy. Um, that would be Here's To Us, the sequel to What If It's Us. Um, I probably also cried when I read that. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, and Fat Witch Summer, which was extremely enjoyable, and I recommend it. Number 12, the most beautiful book that you've bought or received this year. Um, for this one, I don't know how to pronounce the author's last name. I have looked everywhere for a pronunciation, so I'm sorry if I butcher it. Um, Heavy is the Head by Sumoya Inige. I I'm not sure if that's the pronunciation. Please correct me in the comments if I have that wrong. I hate to mispronounce people's names. But yeah, please, it's, it's gorgeous. The cover is absolutely gorgeous, as is her prose. Also, sorry if I sound unenthused at all. It is because I am very, very tired. <laughs> Getting close to the end now. Number 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I am not going to read out all of the books that I need to read by the end of the year. Basically, just what's left of the TBR that I put together at the beginning of the year. I listed out 23 books that I wanted to read in 2023. I think I have 12 left at this point. Not doing great, but I'm gonna try and finish them. Number 14 uh, is the last question. It's favorite book community member, and this one's an easy one. It's Alex Black Reads. They're so delightful, and you need to go check out her channel. She doesn't get nearly enough attention or love, so yeah, go go watch her stuff. That's the end uh, for the mid-year freakout tag. If you want to check out the original video, um, it was posted by Earl Grey Books, and I'll put a link in the description. Either way, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it more than you know. I hope that you are staying as safe out there as you possibly can. I'm about to do the same and go inside because it is getting so hot. It's getting so hot. Feel free to like and share and subscribe and all that stuff if you want to, but what is most important is that you do not forget to love yourself, okay? Bye.